Hi everybody you're listening to the Khandan podcast by the U podcast team a bi-weekly podcast revisiting the movies of Aamir Khan, Salman Khan and Shah Rukh Khan. Every show we pick a random year from three decades of collectively 300 films the Khans have done and let our listeners vote which movie we should talk about. So it's entirely up to you. Pick a team, make a vote, take us down nostalgia lane, punish us or make us reassess a movie we dismissed. We love the Khans, most of us sometimes. and we would love for you all to be part of our khandan because when it comes to the khans in bollywood nothing, nothing else, else really, really matters. matters um we're back badan pe ghee mal ke um <laughs> 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 yeah so we got to see bahubali live with with sujoy in the royal albert hall so people that don't know this royal albert hall is like this classic concert, hall, concert, hall, concert where all... hall where they do like grand balls and like you know like there's like orchestra and all these is a like very prestigious place in london so what they're doing is basically they're projecting the movie on a large screen and the orchestra is doing like all the music like background and sometimes songs and it takes a year to prepare and bahubali is the first indian movie that they're doing this so usually they do it with you know star wars no, and not, lo- not only the indian movie it, i think it's the first non hollywood movie that's being done at the royal albert hall so they've done like star wars and harry potter and stuff like that but bahubali is the first one uh, which is not in english Yeah and uh so we were lucky enough to get some tickets and uh we also Prabhas was there and uh Raja Mauli was there and Anushka Shetty was there and Rana uh, was there yeah MM M- 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 Cream was there yeah uh, so they were and I was like how cool must this, must this be for you know more than the filmmaker even the composer you know to put his score in such kind of a grand spotlight you know with like these professional um classical music players and stuff like that it was a super unique experience and the house was pretty much packed packed up so so you know what what did you think of uh, kind of the experience yeah it was a, a unique experience in the sense that you know when you watch a movie the background score as the name suggests is in the background but in this the whole experience elevates the whole background score and it comes to the foreground and uh, it's louder than the actual movie sound sound as well so some scenes are absolutely amplified uh, for example the whole uh, when um, mahendra not um, the, the the sun enters into the kingdom and the whole jay mahishmati uh, soundtrack plays it's really really loud and this and it's it's really um, such a great experience to see all the orchestra just perform at the same time stamp and you know synchronize with the movie it's really really cool mm and i mean for me it it was a while since i had even seen bahubali so it was like i'd forgotten how bonkers this movie is <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's also just funny how the most bonkers scenes are the one that get like the whistles and people just love the craziness of this movie yeah. um so it was did it was, they hmm? did they do it in telugu or was it in hindi it was in hindi which was and a surprise they, to everybody <laughs> yeah and also like did they did they do the just the background score or were they also doing the songs uh, the songs as well like um the the voice uh, of the songs are all from the movie track itself but the whole uh, instrumental parts mm. of the song are all played live wow yeah it's it's really really impressive i was uh, and it really adds something to it that uh, you know like all of that orchestration and all that pitu pitu are you back yeah i am back oh yeah without Hello. any crackling i was this snooping cool. and listening in <laughs> good 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 yeah we were just talking about bahubali bahubali live i need to correct myself ashanti our dear friend ashanti corrected me that i keep saying bahubali and it's not about you know daughters in law um <laughs> <laughs> it is bahubali <laughs> it is it is it's about strong men with strong arms um so yeah um it's it's an experience and i really hope they do more of these um i think uh, it's yeah uh, and i also 
I hope they do it in more other countries. Like, obviously, it's it's hard for people to, you know, come to the Royal Albert Hall and visit it, visit London, although it's a great time to visit this amazing city that we live in. But, um, yeah, it just, you know, I feel we sometimes undervalue Desi cinema, you know, and just getting that kind of validation from the Gora audience just kind of shows that, you know, like, you know, hum kisi se kam nahi, you know, that kind of thing. So, like, even before we watched the movie, we were also, you know, kind of thinking whether the score of Bahubali would translate into an orchestral arrangement for a, a display like this. And uh, we, uh, like, I had second thoughts about how I, exactly they are going to do it. And it just turns out to be a spectacular product when you go and watch this and experience this with the, a live orchestra. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so no, are we saying that all Bollywood films should get this Royal Albert Hall treatment uh, now? Especially <laughs> not Tum Mere Ho. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Tum Mere Ho, to, there should even be like a ballet company doing like Nagin dances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a Western production. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> On the Broadway and everywhere else. Oh, I, oh my God, Tum Mere Ho is so made for Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> it's so made for Christmas pantomimes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> nutcracker, dekho, aur fir tum mere ho, dekho. Tum mere ho mein bhi nutcracker hai. She's called Kalpana here. <laughs> So I, I so like I mean we haven't started but we I just want to say we're doing tum mere ho because the people wanted this <laughs> this they wanted to do this to us and we couldn't get a better person on than Pitu because Pitu I I told you this on Instagram a little bit but yeah. when you when you came on the last Khandan podcast my <laughs> mailbox was like ye ladki kahan se aayi hai ye ladki kahan ko jaye it was all that like who is this girl where is she from why is she so funny <laughs> you know so i'm glad you're back on cuz i don't think uh, we could have found a better movie for this but i do think um sujoy owes you like a box of chocolates or something like that for making oh, you go through this oh he owes me a lot more i mean both amrita <laughs> and sujoy have really tested the bonds of friendship i was like watching tum mere ho in my background i was thinking of that story from you know krishna and sudama and the things that friends do i was very much casting myself in a very sudama kind of light it was very like <laughs> also i don't know why y'all think i'm funny i'm actually being incredibly serious all the time people just mistake my intellectual cerebral abilities for comedy i mean that's just very pathetic <laughs> yeah but you are starting also something new right for the people that have uh, that yes. have been missing your voice so i started a vlog i uh, firstly i just feel like this word vlog is so achieve it just doesn't roll off my tongue but i was like i didn't want to have a written blog anymore cuz i had one eons ago so i started a vlog and it's called kapow with petu because i read comics and i'm a child and i believe in punching people up so it's basically just a weekly vlog and uh, by the time this episode of khandan is um, you know on the air or whatever i'll probably be like two episodes down i i i watched the first one i loved it and i love that whenever you do kapow you do throw like a <laughs> an air punch and, <laughs> and that air punch is almost as effective as bobby deol's in apne <laughs> Oh my god um, apne is one of my favorite movies <laughs> See maybe you are inspired by it <laughs> It is such a good movie in oh. fact I am planning to do an episode on my love for Sunny Paji and how in him I found my soulmate Oh my god Oh if my you... god <laughs> Uh, I've always had this idea to do like a podcast on Amitabh movies but I think now just because this is your favorite movie I might do a deal podcast series before that <laughs> Sounds amazing. I will tell you many facts about the Deol. Punjab me sirf do cheeze hoti hai Dhol aur Deol. I say this to all my Punjabi friends they hate me. <laughs> 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 let's not digress. let's not digress come back to the podcast people <laughs> so what are we doing on this podcast this episode we're um we're going to be talking about tum mere ho later on we're um, we just did a little chat about our visit to royal albert hall we're doing some trailers but we're going to do try to do quickly because we had a lot of audio problems that you guys <laughs> don't know about but it happened on the background so we're going to get start moving on so um obviously i have my alu bukhara sujoy back from india and i have my nashpati amrita um <laughs> <laughs> thank sujoy, you man, good to have you back how was india 
It was lovely. It was very, very lovely. Uh, I ate a lot. I have gained a lot of weight and I got to meet Amrita. We also ate a lot. <laughs> and I'm back now in the cold, uh, dreary, uh, wet London. Yeah. I, I, I missed I missed hanging out with Amrita. I was getting jealous. Like, I was getting jealous, you know, like, but like I was missing <laughs> Amrita when you posted that picture for sure. Even I am jealous now. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling very left out. <laughs> so Joy or uh, Asim ke saath na, I do like these international dates like uh, kabhi Bangkok, kabhi Amazing. Singapore, kabhi India. <laughs> like yeah, that is how New York se kyun dushmani hai? Yahan bhi aao. I used to, but then you weren't there back then. Back then, I don't know where you were hiding out. And then I, I was in California. I wasn't uh-huh. hiding anywhere. <laughs> You were hiding in the redwood forest, huh. and I left, and then you just snuck in. Oh, okay. <laughs> My standard answer is, you know, change your president, I'll come visit. You know, for any oh, achha, achha. Uh, American friends. I mean, for so you, you guys. You don't like it's... the orange baby? I call him Cheeto Lini. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, but he's a good friend of you, Indian people. Now nah, I'm Pakistani, so yeah. slightly different from me. <laughs> Okay, let's get into it. Um, I think we also quickly wanted to plug um, Channel 4's Indian film season. Um, sorry, Pitu, I didn't send you this information, but uh, we just quickly wanted to plug it because people that didn't grow up in Europe uh, back in the day, like I'm old, um, we didn't have like, you know, ZTV, Sony TV and all that <laughs> kind of thing. We used to just have, you know, BBC would like randomly show, you know, Shole at like, two o'clock at night, you know, and we would all set our recorders <laughs> and it wouldn't work and we would get annoyed by it. And then Channel 4 started to, taking these over and it's kind of become an in- institution and um, they they pick some really good movies. Um, so they, this year they have, uh, they're showing uh, Trapped, Vire Di Wedding, Man Marzia, um, and also like, uh, okay, Happy Pir Bhag Jai, I don't know why, but it's in there. <laughs> Like, it's very <laughs> random. And uh, there's a few other ones too. Uh, Amrita, w- from the list that I sent you, did anyone, any jump out for you? Which Yeah, one? so uh, there's like a few, like, you know, there's like mainstream Bollywood stuff. And then there is uh, um, art house stuff as well. It's just a very, um, it's a very eclectic bunch of movies. But it's worth Keeping an, uh, keeping your eyes open for uh, for them. Beth has son- sent us a little clip for uh, her thoughts on Kapurush because obviously we're we're idiots. We don't watch these old movies. She does. <laughs> She's a smart one. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about tum mere ho on this episode. So <laughs> exactly. We had to bring an intellectual in talk about Kapurush. Hello, top friends. This is Beth from Beth Loves Bollywood bringing you a mini review of Sacha Ajit Ray's Kapurush. Um, apologies for my scratchy voice and mispronouncing Bengali even worse than I mispronounce Hindi. This is a fabulous film and I encourage everyone to watch it when it airs on TV in Britain or any other way that you can get your hands on it, even on a terrible YouTube upload, which is how I saw it. It's worth seeing. This film's title translates to The Coward, and it is paired with a film called Mahapurush, The Great Man, which is a comedy. This one is more of a contemplative tragedy sort of film. It pairs my favorite couple from Bengali cinema, not Uttam Suchitra, but for me, it's Sumitra Chatterjee and Madhavi Mukherjee, and they are lovely together. The story is a college-era romance that is left sort of unfinished and then is poked at again later in life after one of the two is married. There are only three characters in this film, so it's got that sense of being um, almost a stage drama that's done in some sort of very intimate setting. And the whole film is very intimate. It deals very closely with people's emotions and how they express them and the timing of when you say things and when you don't say things and the reverberations that can have throughout your life. I highly recommend this film. Do bring your teddy bear or whatever you use for comfort because it may well rip out your heart and stomp on it just the way being in a relationship with a coward can. 
also they're doing oh they're, there's also they're showing Tanu Ved's Manu and stuff like yeah. that but also they're showing Satyakam which is oh Dharampaji uh, <laughs> yes it's Dharampaji at his most delicious best he was so um, hot in it and he was oh so righteously God. indignant all the time and in he was unbearable <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> <laughs> he's basically unbearable, but he's yeah. also unbearably hot. So it's yeah. like very confusing for it everybody is. that watches it. Because on the one hand, you just want to like jump on him. And then on the other hand, once you jump on him, you want to beat him to death. So <laughs> it's, it's a very confusing movie. I completely movie. agree with Amrita's assessment. <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, it's a Rishikesh Mukherjee movie. And... Um, it has Shamila Tagore as well in it. And uh, it is widely considered to be one of the best movies from that era and of Rishikesh Mukherjee. I have my uh, reservations, as you can, you, <laughs> you've just heard. And uh, uh, Pitu uh, obviously agrees with me. But uh, you should check it out if you have the time. Yeah. Um, it's also yeah. considered Paji's best acting, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he is good. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that he's not good. He is good. Yeah, it is a good performance. It's just that the character itself is such a kind of insufferable. Yes. Not yeah. even kind of. He is insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> you just, just can't stand it. Uh, Sujoy, will you be setting your recorder for any of these movies? You've seen all of them, most of most of them, right? I've, I still haven't seen one where is he actually. I might catch that one because I've not. It's I think it's on Eros or something like that, and I just mm. I don't have a subscription and I couldn't find like a print. So I'll, I think the only ones that I've not seen are the older ones like Satyakam, Kapurush, and the um, then there's Nacho Mia Kumpasar that I haven't seen, and the Space Between the Notes I haven't seen that. Mm. All the mainstream ones I've I, I think I've seen it. Okay. Okay. Well, it's starting the 29th of October, so that's next weekish, I think. So, yeah, for the people, I mean, there's more information. We'll add to the show notes. See which movies there are. There's a there's a few good ones, and you know, otherwise you end up watching them on Z or Sony, and there's so many ads, and they cut everything off. I don't even bother mm. watching it, you know. So best to watch it this way without any. Oh no, Channel Four does have ads, which is annoying by Channel Four. But uh, anyway, but, but like uh, late night shows, they have like only. Uh, very few ads yeah. compared to like a prime time screening you know yeah yeah, yeah. so people in the UK check it out I don't, I'm, I'm sure Channel 4 doesn't uh, transmit outside of the UK but yeah it's starting we'll add more information in the show notes let's get over let's talk quickly about some trailers police <laughs> हम कहलाते हैं पुलिस वाला कुंडा सर हमारे प्रमोशन का क्या होगा सर आपके दिमाग में भी ऐसा कोई ख्याल मंडरा रहा है बिल्कुल नहीं सर हर की नहीं सर सब में भी नहीं सर I love you sir I love you too और साथ लाएं हम हमारी सुपर सेक्सी मिसेस को रज्जो um, Pitu, did you see some trailers? Did you see the Dabang 3 trailer or not? I saw a little bit of the Dabang 3 trailer. I did not understand why Sonakshi Sena was like matkoing so much. I was really scared she was going to dislocate her hip. <laughs> um, but I mean, it was okay. It didn't, it didn't look very interesting to me. I loved Dabang the first one because Chulbul Pandey is just a cutie. Um, but this one, I was just like, eh, it's not interesting. Nahi laga. I, I don't I don't understand anything you're saying. <laughs> what, what, what language is this? <laughs> Amrita. Asim, Asim just saw the entire trailer with like hot eyes going on. <laughs> I swear to God, it was like grinning from one side to the other. I could do the Joker sequel from Jack Queen Phoenix next time, you know. It's like grin, one big grin. And there's literally a money shot at the end. Like, you know, for Salman Khan fans, you can like, if you time it, you can climax at the end of that trailer, right? So <laughs> it's exactly like, you know, two yeah. minutes, 80. You can make it, guys. You can make it. <laughs> Let's do it together. <laughs> I uh, just want to know if this is going to be like a trend going forward where like um, Salman finds a co-star who isn't age appropriate and <laughs> like I'm not going to say that Sanakshi Sinha is age appropriate for Salman yeah. but is relatively not that young 
and then he somehow finds a way to like find a co-star who is like in her teens mm-hmm. like is yeah. this going to be a thing that goes forward because he did that with like um uh, what is that thing bharat Disha Patni I know because uh, I know Disha how to Patni. pronounce her name I will Oh Disha she, Disha was in Bharat really I only knew it Katrina No no she was there as his first girlfriend oh. and, But at oh, least they CGI'd good. him to make him younger here they just shave off the mustache <laughs> <laughs> like that's how far they go um, And then what, this what, one, what else can you expect from a Prabhu Deva movie though Yeah mm. like true <laughs> The one thing you can expect is that it's going to be better than an Arbaaz Khan directed movie though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, we were talking about Dabang, right? And I can vividly remember all the uh, scenes that go in the first movie and I can't remember a thing about the second movie. And Same. What, and w- watching this trailer, it just felt like it kept going on and on and on and I just I don't know. I I I just feel all tired already. Yeah. Mm. I I the only thing I remember of Dabang 2 is that broke Prakash Raj and he said like you know mujhse ab nahi ho payega like I'm done you know like <laughs> I don't think he did any more like maybe he did a few but he was like done after that. He's like I'm going back home. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going back <laughs> home. <laughs> so yeah, I don't I don't remember I I remember it had that uh, murgi tandoori murgi song with Karina in it which was horrible. Um Yeah, the Bangtu was kind of a waste of time, but yeah, I mean, uh, you guys told me not to talk too much about the Bang cuz I could, you know, end up talking 50 minutes about it. I'm really looking forward to it. I miss this Salman, um, you know, and I'm excited for this and Radhe, which they kind of did in the uh, they did like a motion poster thing. Um, I just feel, you know, like in this time of uncertainty, at least there's Salman Khan, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 um, Wait, what's uh, what is Radhe? I didn't. I Radhe didn't is his Eid release. He's already locked it in for next year. You know, like uh, it's it's Eid pe nahi aaye, next wale pe aare. You know, like because there was some doubt ke uh, with the, the Inshallah thing that happened, right? With um, with Sanjay right. Leela. Um, yeah. By the way, that news came out that for Baji Rao, he was pushing, or even for Inshallah, he was pushing Katrina Kaif, right? So people don't know we were having like a DM discussion about that and I gave a pitch of how Bajira would look with Katrina and both Amrita and Sujoy stopped talking to me. <laughs> I don't blame them. Yeah. I do not blame them. <laughs> Cuz I was like oh add a Himesh Reshammiya song in there you know like you know Oh my god Himesh Resham Yeah yeah resurrect resurrect Salman at the end you know he's like jumping with horses like in veer he's back you know he's not dead cuz Salman can die and they stopped talking to me uh, they changed the topic very unsubtly we yeah we we don't have it in us to appreciate Asim's genius yeah. anymore he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mad genius <laughs> i've worn them down that's why <laughs> i need to like pakda a new bande like pitu in this <laughs> um <laughs> second trailer maybe more towards your likings to uh, amrita <laughs> commando 3 that one came out too hindustan roega khoon ke aansu roega there will be a civil war main rahu ya na rahu ek hi aadmi hai जो इस मुद्दे को जड़ से उखाड़ सकता है करण सिंह डोगरा सर आदमी दुनिया के किसी भी कोने में हो सकता है पर इसके लंदन में होने के चांसेस सबसे ज्यादा हैं। अगर तुम्हारा अंदर सा गलत निकला ये देश कभी माफ नहीं करेगा इस बार मातम इंडिया नहीं कोई और मनाएगा Yeah, so I haven't seen Commando One and Two. That's totally <laughs> fine. I, I feel, <laughs> I feel like I have a good idea of what happened in Commando One and Two, based solely off like one dialogue in the trailer for Commando Three, where he was like, "Kashmir me, kisi ko dhoya," and then Afghanistan me, kisi ko dhoya, and now <laughs> is bad London me, isko dhoenge, and I was like, "Acha." I, is I'm it a movie about a dhobi? I'm very confused. <laughs> 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 it's, 
केस इंडिया का धोबी कमांडो धोने की बहुत बात हो रही है यहाँ पे He he does have uh, the man bun and he does have have the and his chest a lot, so there might be something about his past as a dhobi somewhere. <laughs> um, I will say like the I did appreciate that the the women were also kicking ass. Mm-hmm. Um, they looked exactly the same to me, so I don't know if this is just one woman doing like <laughs> both roles because I couldn't tell them apart. I'm very sorry, um, but. Um, Yeah, like it seems to be like you know, war ka chota bhai, you know, like come <laughs> buddy. War ka gharib bhai. <laughs> See, war is the bhais from Kaf Parade, and this is like the bhais from Dhobi Ghat. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what it is. Oh, what did you think, Sujay? Uh, yeah, it was. Like what you expect from a Vidyut Jamal movie at this point, <laughs> mm. it is exactly that <laughs> what it is. Uh, I I don't know how good uh, everybody else is going to be in this movie, but Vidyut is going to kick a lot of ass, and uh, yeah, I will be watching it at the cinema. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Vidyut Jamal. I like. I think he should have the career that Tiger Shroff has, but nepotism. Um, <laughs> I, I, there is some. I like- Wait, I just love that Asim is like. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Vidya <laughs> Jamal. <laughs> I was, I was just thinking, I've never heard this sentence before. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on, go on, go on, Asim. And I do appreciate that they are doing some continuity because, like, one of the actresses is. I don't know if you pronounce her name Adha Sharma or Adha Sharma. Um, oh, I know Adha Sharma. Is it? Adha? She's from this horror movie I once saw. It was very good. <laughs> was it 1920? Is that the one you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like how Pitu disses me for my video Jamal thing, and then she makes these statements. I think it, you know, our yin and yang stays in in like balance that way. <laughs> I think so too. Any credit I lose, <laughs> Pitu loses five minutes after. <laughs> दोनों कद्दा खोदते हैं यू नो ओके सो आधा शर्मा इज इन द सेकंड वन एंड शी इज आल्सो इन द थर्ड वन सो दे आर क्रिएटिंग लाइक यू नो लाइक अ सिनेमैटिक यूनिवर्स अराउंड विद यू जामवाल सो देयर माइट बी सम एलिफेंट्स इन द इन द क्लाइमैक्स टू अ समथिंग लाइक दैट सो कुड बी कूल आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू इट आई डू फील दैट यू नो द द फाइनल शॉट ऑफ व्हाट ही इज डूइंग दैट फ्लिक बैकवर्ड्स आई डू थिंक कटरीना केफ हैज डन इट बेटर इन टाइगर जिंदा है सो दैट्स आई एम जस्ट सेइंग Tiger, uh, you know, um, if you need to be Tiger, you need to be better than Katrina Vidyut. So, just saying, you know. Okay, um, I think we're done. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, move on. Are we talking about? I don't know if I want to talk about Sahu and all that. Did it, no. Like it's it's on yeah. Prime, uh, in four UHD. Um, Pitu, uh, I, I, do you have any interest in watching Sahu? Have you even heard of this movie? No, I basically is Sahu the one that has Neil Nathan Mukesh in it. It yes. does, yes. No, I am basically a big Instagram fan of his, so I like all his pictures and I comment on his uh, father and his daughter because that's all he ever posts about. But his actual pictures, I don't have any interest. In. Does that make me a bad fan? <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was actually funnily enough there were a few like Faridun interviews like that kept oh, yeah. on my timeline, and he was like very like. You know, I don't get the chances I deserve. I do, and you know that kind of thing. He was like very like railing against Bollywood and the chances he doesn't get. So, but I, even I agree with that. Yeah, he's so good looking. He acts pretty well. I mean, if you've seen Johnny Gadar, he acts pretty well. I mean, I don't understand why he hasn't made it. Hmm. I think uh, the year Johnny Gadar came, right, and he was uh, nominated for the best debut actor, yeah. whatever, and Ranbir won for Savarya. Mm. Yeah, that was the movie a, in which he goes into a bar and requests milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that says it all pretty much. Yeah. No, I think the gossip was that uh, his dad is like super interfering and like try to run his career and mm. like that didn't work out well for him. Interesting. Uh, 
I think he basically pulled a Vivek Oberoi where he thought he was a bigger star than he was. I think mm. that's what happened to him more than anything. And then yeah, we, and also the movie choices that he made, like yeah. you know, and and that kind of tanked. Yeah, because there was this one he did with Bipasha Basu. I don't know if you guys watched that movie. No, it which was one? quite good and it flopped. I think Pitu, you would appreciate it because it's huh. about this. Uh, I think he has like. A vi- like a photo camera and it can take photos of the future or something like that oh yeah that kind of does sound like my cup of tea I know, so maybe I you should check it out <laughs> you should check it out um, I don't know I'll, I'll try to google the name uh, while we are talking but uh, it, I think that was kind oh, of a de- and, yeah that's it even had that song where Bipasha is a DJ and she's like fully on DJing with one hand on her <laughs> headphone you know uh, you know that song oh. yeah Oh, he sang that song even, didn't he? He's always singing on his Instagram, so I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. He was literally, there was one video of him where Asha Bhosle is like a good friend of the family and she'd come to their house and he was singing at her feet and it was terrible and besur and she was pretending it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if I was Asha Bhosle, I would go home and take a very long nap. <laughs> I think in all of Bollywood, we are the only ones discussing Neil Nitin Mukesh's career. <laughs> I, I was just sitting here and thinking, like, when did Asim become, like, an expert on Neil Nitin Mukesh? Like, he's, like, pulling fact of fact of the fact out of his pocket. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Do you, do you know his rap name, by the way? What? It's NNM. <laughs> nice. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, and I call him Atihasik Neil Bhai. Shall okay, we move on to yeah. Tum Mere Ho? I want to like preface this with a few things first. Like, <laughs> right? Like, I didn't know about this movie. I like this got like thopo on me like i didn't like, <laughs> i felt i was forced to watch this like pitu was yeah. and um what i also realized is until like half of the movie i was waiting for that suresh vadkar song tum mere ho you know that one and then Ooh. i realized it's not in this movie so the main reason i kind of wanted to watch the movie wasn't even in there um, that tum mere ho song was picture as on chandrachud singh just so you know i do i i go i like youtube did because i was like wow this is not even just regular chandrachud it's rocky chandrachud he's like yeah. doing like backpack running and there's like exactly uh, uh, what's anjela something anjela zaveri zaveri she's in there and it's like very like you know it, I don't know what it's called where like men are like so um, kind of whining and crying that it forces women to be with them. It's called toxic masculinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is that <laughs> song. Like he's like, Tum mere yo, and I'll keep running here with like a filled backpack and following you until you fall in love. And I'm sure in the movie she falls in love with him. So clearly it works, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, you just reminded me of Sunil Shetty in Dhadkan. <laughs> hey Bhagwan. Yeah, but he didn't yes, get her at the end, right? Uh, no, because Akshay Kumar souped in, na. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the other thing also I have to say is I think the snake charming things I don't understand. So you 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 guys will have to explain this to me a few times. <laughs> and also I don't want to offend people because I think there's a line between religion and culture and folklore that's kind of like dangling in the middle here right because when i kind of suggested that it's kind of ridiculous that this genre was so big back in the 90s i think a few people got a bit offended and i don't want to do that because i just want to say you know my co-hosts are indian they are hindu and they are incredible in every way they have taught me so much about their culture and religion. I love them and admire them so much. And as you can see, we have fun together. Happy kar- karma chaut to everyone. Happy nag panchami everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just sitting here thinking, who are these pranis who are like offended? By, I know. Like, yeah. like somebody saying that nag movies are trash. Yeah. They, could yeah. Be, they could be Ichadhari Nag and Zamrata. Be careful. They might come and dustify you. <laughs> Uh, but but I, seriously though, like, where are this Banjara Sapera community who, who like, made it so big in the Bollywood industry? Like, how did they get so much representation throughout the 80s and the 90s through Jitendra and these movies? Like, mm. I was waiting for Jitendra to show up. 
I thought he was going to be in this. Like, because, like, the movie starts, like, I don't know about your your print, but it did. Th- this movie has no disclaimer about no animals being harmed because I think at, lo- at least 300 snakes died in this movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, they have to. Like... And the first shot is this, you know, this Thakur and he's like in a tree. <laughs> like that's the <laughs> first shot of the movie. And then it's about, um, what's it called? Nagmani? Yeah. 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 And there's no further mention of the Nagmani after that. So can you guys explain to the non-Desi people what is a Nagmani? Because the movie doesn't do that. Oh. So this I know, is actually a very good... Okay, so that's a very good point, uh, Asim, because I have never been able to figure out what it exactly is. So, Pitu Bata, I have what is read, it? I have read many, many articles about this because you guys do not know, but when I was a tween, my favorite genre of films was snake movies. Of and course. I was obsessed with <laughs> Nagin, Nagina. And my cousin, Tupu, and I, we had a dance we used to do on Main Teri Dushman, Dushman Tu Mera, Main Nagin Tu Saper. And we would take mm-hmm. turns being Amrish Puri. And the other one would keep like stinging the other one and that's so funny. It was wonderful childhood. I also used to dance to that song. It's a uh, very dancable why. song. It is. It is an amazing <laughs> song. Like okay. uh, growing up in the northeast, I I did not have a single snake. Char- I have never seen a snake charmer, right? So the whole uh, the bean is a mystical instrument for me, like you know. And so we used to like hold up pencils and. Uh, act up like uh, Amrish Puri. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, to okay, my... so based on my research, the Nangmani is basically this like, so it's basically a jewel and whoever possesses the Nagmani, and by whoever I mean snakes, whoever possesses the Nagmani has the ability to shapeshift into human form and also the Nagmani can give you, it can kind of like unlock a lot of treasure, so it's kind of like a video game in real life, so if you were to steal a Nagmani from a shapeshifted snake, then you would also, those magical powers might possibly transfer to you also and or you might get a lot of wealth so Mm. So what I understood, like this is what uh, the version I had heard, is that a nagmani only is in the throat of an ichadari nag, Yikes. which is like a, a, a cobra that's been a hundred years, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and then the 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 thing appears, then which is like a diamond, right? And it gives you superpowers. Hmm. Um, so that's what? what the uncle Thakur is looking for. He was just randomly like waiting in a tree. Um, and then he drops something and it kills the snake, which was actually like the mechanics of this movie don't make sense to me. I don't know if they're supposed to. <laughs> Wait, but where are you and Pitu doing all this Nagmani related research? <laughs> like, that's what I want to know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like there is more to the story. Like you and Pitu are like going out in the middle of the night to look for like a hundred gold like, Our browser really history is there. identical. <laughs> <laughs> just that like you are doing o- offline research reading like really old <laughs> scrolls <laughs> made out of barks you know and reading old myth about nagmanis yeah and the curse of the ichadari nagin yeah 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 it's it's those scrolls you read and in the background you hear you know like mere surya vanshi ko le aao, mera surya yeah. vanshi. <laughs> it's those scrolls we have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it's 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 interesting because I think a lot of people don't wouldn't understand that, and we need to be you know conscious of our non-Indian audiences that an Ichadari nag, which I do not know the English translation to what Ichadari means. Does anybody shape shifting? Shape shifting is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. No, but that's I mean that's essentially what it means. But Ichadari does not etymologically like that's not the meaning because Ichcha is desire and yeah. Dhari is to be able to like take on any form you want so it technically means whatever form you desire that's the etymological meaning the literal translation but essentially it means a shape-shifting now yeah. yeah and it's like a like a like a powerful cobra becomes that right yeah. like it's a mythical yeah. kind of being and then yeah. it shapes shifts into Kalpana Ayer yeah. Mostly, <laughs> but what I, what who I find is in, the who is the worst Ichadhari Nagin on like the face of the planet, and that includes like 
Manisha Koirala and Arman Kohli. <laughs> like, uh, what's the name of that film? Jani Man, right? Jani Dushman. Jani Dushman, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I thought she was like terrible. a good snake. I thought she was like <laughs> this is how a vengeful snake would look like except for the the clothes she's wearing. Um it is an interesting choice to you can be any person and you decide to be Kalpana Iyer though. Um <laughs> that is that is interesting for me. But I do un- like the mechanics of turning into a human and back to a snake because it feels like you can either stand up in one place as a human or you can dance as a human but anything else you need to turn back into a snake so mm. if i need to go from one room to the other room i have to turn back into a snake but it's not bad because it's kind of an in- instant thing that happens you don't have that awkward phase where you're half snake half human right mm, like right. like Mal- uh, malika sharawat had in his Well there's a TV show in India called Nagin and it's it stars Mouni Roy and it's very popular it's like I it's been going on for several seasons and I do not watch the show because as you know I'm an intellectual <laughs> however I do watch <laughs> their promos and their promos are like bad shit crazy and in all of their promos they love to have these tight shots of mummy roy's eyes where they're like starting to change color and slowly they start showing her form like you know morphing into snake so there are many screenshots on my like phone and all where it's basically like her in half human form half snake form so if you're interested in the mechanics you might want to look into that tv show asim yeah definitely definitely not saying like, i watch the, the- it the sudden But, transitions in this from human to snake and vice versa are actually you know restricted because of technology in the 90s and <laughs> and and uh, tahir was not having enough funds to invest in special effects but it turns out well uh, because there there are no you know aging um, you know uh, special effects that we need to worry about because it instantly transforms into snake or a kalpana ayer also it's a snake movie everybody gets it like yeah. <laughs> asim is the only one who's like thinking about it everybody else is like yeah all right snake yeah i just i just want to say michael jackson's thriller came out in 1982 which was 9 years ago so they could have done like the mid transformation mm-hmm. thing if they wanted to but uh, Yeah, I do like also like sometimes when she's like flying as a snake, she turns into a snake, but when she's trying to bite Amir's ankle, she's trying to do it as a human too and she's like Juhi <laughs> Chawla. So it is kind of slightly confusing what she can do and what she can't do. I was also surprised that she turned into Juhi Chawla because again, if mm, you can yeah. turn into Juhi Chawla, why do you turn into Kalpana? <laughs> 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 that is the most valid question that you will hear on this podcast. <laughs> And also I want to say two positive things because a lot of people were already hating that we were doing this movie and they said we were picking this movie to make fun of it and I was thinking what other choice do we have? But I want to say um Amir kudos to Amir to handling on these snakes. Like I would be out of the window like I'm not touching any snakes. um but he's like seems to be quite comfortable with them so i was like yeah that's something <laughs> on I the like first that. day chuke dekhe chuke dekhe <laughs> <laughs> and the last day is juice <laughs> juice yeah juice <laughs> <laughs> that's how dating in india goes <laughs> <laughs> to say my uh, my anaconda don't <laughs> my anaconda we have too many jokes we need to structure this slightly <laughs> sorry i do like that this is the movie that tahir husain like wrote for his son mera bachcha ubharta sitara hai like i will eat this movie with him yeah bade ka sapera bada ho ke papa kehte hain bada naam karega bada ho ke sapera banega yeah but i under, i don't understand this logic that this was his like second or third movie like how is this a good choice like how, why did amir pick this movie and his dad was on board and they had like you know they majru sultan puri wrote the lyrics like, <laughs> like how does well, another question is why did juhi chawla do the film no she didn't have probably choice like she like I think at that time like I don't know like she seemed to be in like a kind of a Stockholm syndrome relationship with <laughs> Amir like she hated him but there was no other choice for her 
uh, I feel like I don't know, but she did like a few of them, and then she stopped and never wanted to come back again. Um, yeah. And I think when we were even talking about Kayamat se Kayamat tak, she was not very happy with, like you know, you could like infer from her interviews that Amir got a bit too much of a pull in the movie and the marketing. And I don't know, in tum mere ho, Amir seems like a very passive character to be honest. Like he doesn't matter that much. Um, he doesn't do much. He's just like kind of there. He's just like playing his flute everywhere, um, and that's it. He doesn't do much. <laughs> I just want everyone to notice uh, in the scenes where Amir is shirtless, where do his pants begin? Because <laughs> everyone keeps giving me a hard time when I say that Amir didn't discover how to wear pants until like 2002 or something. But look at where his pants are, and you tell me I am wrong. You can't. <laughs> Yeah. And like the, the, the also the thing is they go so high that they don't cover his ankles anymore. <laughs> like that's the funny part. <laughs> I, I was just like, why? And, like, and for a snake, maybe he's like a big Asterix and Obelix fan, guys. Like maybe he just yes. wants to wear it like Obelix, like yeah. over his chest. I think that's where whole all the whole Banjara Sapera community get their fashion inspiration from is uh, <laughs> Asterix and Obelix and the Gold community. Right. Because I just think if you're a sapera, ankles are kind of like the danger zone for a snake, mm, right? Do dude. not bear like you're teasing them at that moment. You're being a tease, Amir. But like Amir is wearing very fashionable boots throughout the movie. <laughs> I also liked his jacket, his orange jacket with the black snake embroidered on it. I woke up Ajit from his deep sleep to make him look at it. I was like, look at this jacket. You should get it too. I <laughs> this is like burning up like voodoo dolls of the Khandan podcast. <laughs> so he didn't share my enthusiasm for the fashion. I was very disappointed. <laughs> so I mean, this whole movie is like two hours of dick innuendos, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and oh my god, what was t- that Rajzuchi lechery thing going on? Oh, we have to talk about, right? Like, it was okay. horrible. Right. Um, yeah, so these <laughs> Saperas have this festival, which is basically <laughs> sexual assault into like a happy fun time kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, so they have to kidnap a woman and then go into the hut with her. Halla gulla. Hulla, hulla, hulla. <laughs> yeah. Hulla. <laughs> so, I would go with scientific research. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, while I was watching it, it reminded me of all those books and novels I've read that talk about, like, um, the pagan religions in the West. And if you read about, like, Beltane, which was the fertility festival in spring, Mm. um, that's exactly how Beltane was. Mm. Like, where they would, like, you know, burn, like, things in the fields and then people would choose their partners and go off into these, like, open fields or whatever and come back and that was, like, your mate for the year or something like that. And I was like, oh, my God, they are maybe, like, getting inspiration from Beltane. Yeah. It's like the sexual dynamics in this village is very, very weird, I have to say. (laughs) But it also kind of brings back to the point that I make a lot of times is that small villages and life there really sucks. (laughs) (laughs) Because Juhi Chawla got excited for a toy boat in a water bowl. Like, oh, 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 oh." (laughs) it's like, wow, this is this is the only thing you guys have. And you're like Thakurs and you're quite rich and well off. But you have to get entertained by, by you mela. know, yeah, melas and like jalebis and stuff like that. So <laughs> that, that was that was kind of sad to me. Um, hey, yeah. I live in New York and I get excited by jalebis. Okay, don't knock jalebis. <laughs> <laughs> I would not dare. But you're not a thakrayan if I if I. This not is true. Say. I'm just I'm a working stiff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, for us, it's fine. We get we can get excited for us. We're plebs, okay. you know. <laughs> um, yeah. And there's all like a, there's like a lot of shitty belly dancing too. Um, and then I think it also this like this this movie gave a lot of hope to like you know snake charmers probably you know like uh, Amir is snake charming and like a, a a woman like Juhi Chawla would just like immediately you know fall in love and want to touch your snake you know so <laughs> touch your snake yeah <laughs> That's this what is you where said. this podcast is gonna go there's gonna be a, a lot of these ones. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is a that's what she said joke here in this movie. Oh, oh god. 
Um, but Juhi is amazing though, right? Like we, I yeah. have nothing bad to say about Juhi Chawla in this movie. Anybody like do you agree with that? Or? <laughs> like, everybody is like yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was not like that. this is again like you know debunk three all over again. <laughs> this is not like I'm like <laughs> so the polar opposite of you guys that you went silent. But my God, like the way so this movie came out in what nineteen ninety? I believe. Yeah, nineteen ninety, right? Yeah. And this so the story is about this girl who. gets married by proxy to some kid she's never met when she was like so tiny and then they sent her off to be a widow like that's fucked up man no and then remember they want to get her remarried also yeah yeah, yeah. later on yeah that was a subplot i mean that was like a plot point i was not expecting mm. Cuz the so first my my question is like where is it happening this movie like where in india is this happening in and a when, village in a generic w- village <laughs> when is it happening oh when could be a good question i i don't like it seems like modern times because they have a iwa tape recorder oh yeah But, <laughs> they had tape recorder yeah, yeah they had that they, so they do actively place it in the modern era Um, yeah. So, but that's hmm. the only. If that scene wasn't in there, I would not have. Yeah. Then it could be a valid point. Maybe this is in eighteen eighty four, something like that. Maybe Amir's family just have like this very weird idea of what happens in like small towns <laughs> <laughs> because between yeah. Q S Q T and this film, you are just like, huh? What do you think happens in a hmm. small town? You know? Yeah, like they are so detached from the rest of India, and so they think like, "Ha, bachpan mein shadi hota rahega, vidwa hogi to kya hua?" <laughs> and and all the sanskar and pratishtha and anushasan. <laughs> Because if this movie was just like a fantasy, snake charming, Nagina type movie, it would be fine. But then it yeah. becomes kind of this social, political kind of gender role rever- thing kind of movie. and then it's like totally loses the plot and it also just doesn't advance because the the reveal is so clear from the start we clearly know that amir is the son that they lost and she's actually married to amir so you know did we know that that came as a surprise to me asim <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean kitna ki chaoge you know like it's it's crazy like you know like that that i don't understand like my understanding of why they made this movie how they made this movie the people involved in this movie that part i don't understand but i did hear a few people say that they like the songs of this movie i mean the title song is catchy but that's about it it is not like a particularly good song but it is an earworm of a song when I, mean, i went to work because i was watching this movie on my lunch time in my phone and uh, i went back to work after my lunch time was over and i was like humming to mere ho until i caught like my coworker looking at me so <laughs> this 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 version of tum mere ho or the chandrachur singh version no no this one ah, okay. the chandrachur one i wasn't even thinking about okay okay well you will I, be oh, humming it after this podcast though yeah <laughs> watching through this movie like uh, the one thing that really annoyed me is the constant uh, the bean yeah theme. Mm. it's so fucking annoying is a, is a bean supposed to be soothing like because like Juhi Chawla is really like jamming to, to it, and she's like, "Yeah, I want to keep yeah. listening to this again and again." I was like, "Wow, really?" Like, <laughs> I think the whole purpose of the bean is to hypnotize a snake, and it's supposed right. to resonate with their frequency. But it just feels like a very cheap keyboard synth sound. Yeah, they didn't even get a real bean, right? No, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. And there's a lot of bean, and like it's it's played at action scenes, it's played at romantic scenes, it's played at sex scenes. <laughs> it's always the bean, and like the yeah. like a few times I was like, you could use like a saxophone for this, but no, they they stay with the bean <laughs> to the point that it even drowns the dialogue. That yeah. like Amir Khan is saying sweet nothings to Juhi Chawla just <laughs> before their you know bedding night. and mm-hmm. um th- just the bean is playing like they were like fully committed to the bean on this in this movie <laughs> to mere ho feel the bean <laughs> feel the bean <laughs> <laughs> mr so, bean <laughs> uh, about talking about songs and bean and like sweet nothings and all like the weird sex stuff so amir and juhi do the deed right in yes. the forest right yeah they, right they bang they in did. the forest they right? did yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Once, <laughs> so we've clarified that. What's yeah, next? there was a bonfire. Yeah, and there was right. a washing line, remember? Yes. That's what confused me later as well. Because yeah. I was just like, wait, you had, like, you did it. Yeah. I did it. But I, Abrita, people are allowed to do it more than once. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a sanskar pitu <laughs> I also I, I, did I think f- you have me confused with Amrita Rao <laughs> <laughs> oh god um, yeah anyway so I also thought that was weird and I did feel bad for Juhi because it gave me those um, flashbacks of that you know that cine blitz or star wo- dust cover she has with Govinda where they're wearing yes. like you oh, know yeah. Yeah, and like, uh, like, uh, Jui is really like worried in that shot that something might pop out, you know, because it looks <laughs> like a very flimsy, like Ram Teri Ganga Meli type situation that she's in, uh, and she does not trust Amir at all. So yeah, I felt bad for Jui for that uh, for his banging scene that they had. Uh, so one of the inconsequential things that I was thinking about is the whole. Um, Amir's character and his dosti with the Nagraj that yeah. came to nothing really. Uh, I, I thought that Nagraj was going to be another uh, Ichadhari Nag and he would turn into like Jitendra. Jitendra, yeah, that's what I thought too. He would turn into Jitendra, like friendly appearance Jitendra, you know, that kind <laughs> yeah. of thing. Um, yeah, because Shesh, how... Sheshnag released the same year uh, after the after Tummereo. Hmm. My god, really? Yeah. yeah. And did Nagraj die at the end? Did Kalpana Ayer kill Nagraj? Yeah. She did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There was no um, even mom- a moment of sadness for poor Ra- Nagraj. <laughs> no, nothing. Like, Sorry, Pitu, you were saying something. Oh, I was saying that one like thought that like really haunted me even after the movie was over was, it, think about it this way, okay? Amir Khan is like this village boy person who lives in this like little tribal community and he like catches snakes and takes them to the Zahir Center or whatever the hell. But think about how much confidence he has. I mean, he has game, okay? Because like when he sees this beautiful Juhi Chawla for the first time, she's a complete babe and he's like making eyes at her and then uh, she's like also making eyes at him and she's like Mujhe to pata nahi, aap log saap ki se pakadte hai, mein to dekh ke dar jati hu. And he's like yeah, yeah, uh, you want to come to the mountain top tomorrow and I will show you how I catch snakes and she's like sure and he's like okay dude if someone tried to ask me out on a date and the, like if Ajit tried to ask me out on our first date and he was like come to the mountain top I will get snakes for you you want to come I would be like shut up and I would throw him out of there yeah. but imagine the confidence yeah and like they're at the mountain top and I was like that's not the snake I was talking about <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what happens when you come from a society where like se- sexual assault is like <laughs> I, I I do also like feel that they're like they're not very discreet in that jungle or that jungle is like like you know like the center of all the roads in that village because they get caught every minute. <laughs> like the Munimji ca- catches them, the other girlfriend ex that wants him catches them, Auntie Pakhrat catches them. Like everybody just catches them when they're like saying goodbye. Or, and it seems to be also the same jungle. They say that she's moved to another city, but <laughs> they've recreated the same village in that other city, and they also have the same jungle in that same city. So and the same mountain top where, where the auntie is yeah. playing on them. What I also found interesting is there's three kids, right? Um, there's Amir, there's Rajshusti, Shusti, how do I pronounce his name? Rajzuchi. Yeah, him. And then the, the third actress, the girl that's in love with uh, with the Amir, but then settles for Raj at the end. Like, yeah. you know, ye bhi chalega. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't understand that these weren't, that Raj and the girl weren't brothers and sisters. So this Sapera mister has just three random kids that are just kind of, hanging around him and they all call him Papa and he's not returning any kids he's just keeping them and he's like putting them through this Sapera montage within four minutes they become super Saperas um <laughs> wait but like Ahmed isn't just a Sapera he's also a Tantric 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. True. We can't forget yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that also, he's amazing. like a like a entertainment for weddings. So, like the <laughs> Sapera community provides a lot of benefits to you know society and as a whole. And also, like provide uh, poison for serum research. Oh, yeah. Doctor Khurana! Oh my God! How could I forget <laughs> Doctor Khurana? Dhande me bhot purana. They didn't even dub his voice. Clearly, that's not his voice because that Mister that has that body structure. Cannot have the voice that Doctor Khurana has. It's like completely like go back to those scenes. It doesn't gel well at all. <laughs> oh, I can trust you for quoting Doctor Khurana. <laughs> Asim's favorite bit in the whole movie. <laughs> I jumped with joy, man. I heard it was Prem Khurana. No, Doctor Khurana. इसको डंडे मारेंगे, इसको बीन मारेंगे चल। Can we? I mean, we talked a little bit about it, about this whole child marriage surprise, child marriage. <laughs> It's really the surprise nobody wants, right? Like when you discover. Yeah. Um, also, like when Ame finds out, and like you know, she's like trying to save his feelings, so she doesn't explain that she's a widow. So he's like धोखे बाज तुमने पहले क्यों नहीं बताया एंड देन लाइक स्लैप्स एंड देन मुझे बढ़ावा क्यों दिया ही सेड मुझे बढ़ावा क्यों दिया एंड शी सेज शी सेज मैंने तुम्हारी बीन सुन के पसंद भी कर ली तो तुमको क्या लगा लाइक द होल थिंग इज लाइक अ पन लाइक एवरीथिंग इज अ डिनोवेंडो एनीवे आई एम इज लाइक स्टॉप बीइंग अ स्नेक टीज यार या and then like right afterwards he's like singing this song like you know like oh bewafa like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and i'm like but you just said that she's a dhoke baaz and he never wants to see her face again and like now he's just like i'm the party entertainment and the entertainment is that i'll just whine about this girl so i have a <laughs> thing about this song i thought i had right So this is those classical unsettled diss songs that Bollywood has where at a party somebody is singing and only three people know who the song is about <laughs> and all the rest of the guests just have to stand there with a one glass in their hand right so yeah. this song is about Bewafa and he's crying and all that wouldn't the party guests feel that he's in love with the bride and she's getting married to somebody <laughs> else and he's singing that song isn't he creating tension in like you know Saheli's <laughs> Wedding for the rest of our life. <laughs> That is actually an excellent point. <laughs> yeah, marriage में tension डाल रहा है. Sapera. But also, Sapera. who calls a f- Sapera to their wedding reception? <laughs> It's Prem Khurana, Doctor Khurana. Can you imagine like going to somebody's wedding reception and you're like, and now for the future entertainment, a snake. <laughs> I think they are limited with entertainment choices in a small village or that's what Tahir Hussain believes. They like entertainment ke liye jungle mein jayenge. Jungle mein jo milega wo leke aayenge. In jungle mein sirf sapere hain. <laughs> oh god. And I also like that you know when they like um when she's like doing going home to the in-laws like all her sahelia around around and like ah dil chhota mat kar hum milne aayenge. I was like jhooti saheli koi nahi milne aayega. <laughs> <laughs> all a bunch of liars. <laughs> That's because all the Sahelis are going to the mountain to meet their own Sapena. <laughs> oh, okay. oh God! She did help out. That she like I I do like like the main Saheli. Yeah. She she kind of went in bahu outfit to meet Amir again. You know, and I could I I like that contrast between single Saheli and bahu Saheli. <laughs> um because she was like fully like looking like reema lagu at that time with the full sari she was sari. bahubali <laughs> she was bahubali actually <laughs> and she kind of oh, clears nice up that. things for him for uh, you know amir and uh, cuz i didn't i don't i think he understood the bahu part but he he didn't understand the vidwa part so You're right. and then he kind of readjusted his expectations so then he went like you know he ranja and he went after her in a way um this is also the plot of preeti jinghania and mohabbat hai by the way oh yeah and it's jhangiani jhangiani ni <laughs> mm-hmm. okay say it again say it again jhangiani 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 doesn't matter she doesn't have a career anymore anyway i can pronounce it however you can, 
<laughs> you can always tell when like Asim is trying to pull a fast one because he'll just suddenly go like the emphasis will always be on like the first syllable. He'll just go like young and then he'll just sort of like beat it out at the end. Uh, the last time we discussed Preeti Jangiani, I said like uh, she's married to in real life to uh, Parveen Dabbas and Amrita said, oh yeah, that definitely makes sense because those two fit together. <laughs> I don't know who Praveen the Baz is. Who's that? Monsoon Wedding. Monsoon Wedding. The uh, Chiranji Lal from Khosla Ka Ghosla. Okay. I'll I'll have to, I still don't know who that is. <laughs> Asim does not watch these little little movies. He only yeah. watches the big big movies. The <laughs> he only goes to Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. It's too hot for us. Two and Bhai Ki Eid movie. Yeah. Uh, Bhai Ki Eid movie. I need money shots. Um, <laughs> and Vidyut Jambal movies. Let's not forget what a Vidyut Jambal fan he is. <laughs> like, obviously he's going to watch Commando. <laughs> obviously. Obviously I'm a huge fan. Um... I do find it interesting that everybody's quite accepting of what's going on, you know, like, uh, especially Juhi Chawla, she's just like going with it and she's now going to be a beva in their household. And also like the in-laws have no shame and they're like, yeah, our Raju ki akhri nishani hi to hai. I was like, what is going on, man? Do you feel there was like a moment in this movie where, you know, so she comes into the house of the in-laws and you have the auntie, auntie Pakhrat, you know, and then hmm. her son, Ronak. And he, didn't he look like a rapist? Look, Didn't he look like he was going to make a move on Julie? I, yeah, yeah, I was waiting for it. Yeah. And then it never happened. Yeah. But it and didn't, right? Like, like Nagaraj would come into the picture and save her. Yeah. I think that was kind of like a plot point because they were like playing Shatranj and he was like, Rani Bachao. And he was making like an offhanded joke about Rani Bachana being... Jui is the Rani and Tum Bacharyo and that kind of thing. And yeah. uh, there was something going there, but they, I think they, they, they kind of cut that out, which I'm thankful for. Oh, so the, then the pretty much big reveal happens, right? I also like the snake community, the, the Sapera community. The, at the start of the movie, he makes Ame take this very long oath about being a Sapera and never to use this dark arc against people and all that. Did you remember that? And there was like a very intense kind of oaths that these saperas have to take they things they take things very very seriously it seems like um but i also thought there would be some sort of payback like payoff yeah. for that like down the road like he would be <laughs> tempted to like do something for juhi but like there's nothing nothing like nothing. There, there was the one fight sequence right when the thakur send one of the tantrics to fight yeah. amir and he's like uh, fighting Baba Kalunath and ends up choking him and, you know, <laughs> yeah. all, all the uh, blood on his face and all that. I think that's Baba the only... Baba Kalunath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that his actual name or is Sujoy just like saying any name? Uh, I, I, I'm just saying any name. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> but he's been like a lot of Ramsey horror movies, right? That, yeah, that yeah, guy. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I actually... Like, so they have this psychic battle between each other, right? Mm -hmm. And funnily, I just watched X-Men Dark Phoenix and it's on the same level. <laughs> like, the both of the fights. So, again, I want to give slight kudos to Tum Mere Ho that uh, the acting is on par with whatever Michael Fassbender and all that are doing in, you know, in Dark <laughs> Phoenix. Choose! Jaya, choose! <laughs> choose! Jaya, choose! Choose! <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Uh, I love uh, that Amir Khan. I mean, I have to say, like, I love his branding game. This is a guy who has essentially convinced the entire world that he's the only intellectual in Bollywood. <laughs> he's the most cerebral, brilliant person out there. Or, you know, uske pearls of wisdom wo jharta hai har kisi interview mein. But these are the kind of films he's done. He's done Tum Mere Ho. He's seen Dalat Ke Jung, which uh, actually is like, a, a, is a hidden pleasure of mine. I actually like that movie a lot. Um, it's like a very Garibo ka uh, Indiana Jones movie. So he's done all these like very questionable films and he goes around going like, yeah, I'm very choosy and you know, it a project has to really inspire me and all. And I'm like, yaar, apni filmography dek pehle. <laughs> and there was another one somebody so sent to us, right? Isi ka naam Zindagi. That was also a really bad one, which I have not seen yet. Um, I don't know, if Pitu, if that's also one of your favorites. Uh, no, I haven't seen Isika Naam Zindagi. 
that's yeah. that's not ringing a bell yeah that's apparently it's on good learn. youtube we got catherine sent it nicely to us and which was also funny that this tum mere ho also has a very good decent print on youtube which mm. you know we've seen good movies in terrible prints um you know even hum hai rai pyar ke there was no good print of it but this is like in pristine 480 <laughs> hd hdpi you know it's uh, it's it's quite funny um I mean this movie is weird man I don't know what else I can really say about this I don't th- I also didn't think we did like a proper review or anything that was just a randomly thought about but because this movie is kind of very random and kind of just a collection of weird scenes and plots that are there and then go nowhere like the nagmani like the uh, you know the superpowers amir has and then also just the plot device of you know she being married to somebody and the beva Ajay is married to Amir so the whole issue of mar- child marriage nobody really learns anything nobody actually says that oh it's actually bad to marry these people uh, at a young age because at the end it's she was married to Amir anyway so sab theek thak hai i don't know pitu do you have any kind of wrapping up final thoughts anything that we missed out on tum mere ho Mm, I mean, I regret my friendship with Amrita and Sujoy. <laughs> I was basically bullied into reviewing it because Sujoy, like, first he flattered me. He's like, "Oh, people loved you on your last appearance on them. You must come back. You must." I was like, "I was like, wow, my dear, ni tarif ki." And then he's like, uh, "Will you come back?" And I was like, "Absolutely, anything for my friends." And then he drops this fucking bomb on me. He's like, "You must watch Tum Mere Ho." And I was like, uh, "No, I'm phobic about snakes. I cannot watch this movie. It is a terrible movie." and then not it it wasn't enough that sujo it was like blackmailing me then amrita start sending me messages so it was like what the hell man and then that's when i had my little krishna sudama moment <laughs> <laughs> i just want everyone to know like pitu is one giant jhooti because there she is like spending her childhood dancing to like materi gushmar and so all of a sudden she's like oh i'm phobic about snakes oh no <laughs> <laughs> Pitu, have have you you seen seen movie before, by the way? Oh yeah, I've seen it like three, four times. I mean... <laughs> 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 I've seen seen it many times in India. They used to play this a lot on Z Cinema, and I used to watch it every time it was being played. <laughs> wow. Who am I to look away from तुम मेरे हो So I'm basically the only one that had never seen this. That's because you're an intellectual, <laughs> <laughs> and you're a posh, posh banda who goes to Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> But also a Vidya Jamal fan, obviously. I think they should combine the two interests and show Vidya Jamal movies at the Royal Albert Hall. I think oh, that God. would make me really, really happy. Yeah. Amrita, final uh, words on Tum Mere Ho. <laughs> You know like I I mean you this is basically the kind of movie that you watch with your head switched off like I feel like <laughs> Asim tried to like understand the why and wherefores and that's where he went wrong uh you, you shouldn't do that <laughs> uh, but it's a monster movie so you just like watch it and then the only thing that I that like really like like pissed me off like even more than all the you know the weird sexual assault stuff and everything was the was like the ending where amir and yuhi just go back home with their terrible parents who were trying to kill them <gasps> that's another thing yeah <laughs> i'm just like why would you go back to those people they're like telling like you know yuhi like tum paida hote hi mar kyu nahi gayi yeah. and like her, her his dad is like sending like tantrics to kill him and yeah. paralyze him and i'm just like why would you go back to these people just because like some lady came up and was like oh mera beta main to teri maa hu <laughs> and then it was like acha theek hai like we'll we'll come back with you i'm like no stay in the forest with all the snakes the snakes are your friends yeah she i think she <laughs> says mamta ki bhi kuch keemat hoti hai and all that and that's how she gets him back in you know ji ma this emotional blackmail yeah and I, just imagine man like a you figure out that your dad is not your dad and then it's like sudhir pande is your dad <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> that's like so what i want to know is what happens next like okay now they have left the sapera community yeah. or other amir has left it and gone back into the bosom of his parents or whatever but now what now he has to change his chal dhal he has to change his kapde yeah. maybe he has to go get a job as an accountant in a firm yeah. and has a 9 to 5 job like how is that all that going to work yeah 
No, they're, they're tacos, right? So they probably have some family business that he can get into. But imagine that all of his decision making is based on, you know, <laughs> sapera pan, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> how is that going to work in, in, in import-export? Like, you know, how, how do you apply that knowledge? <laughs> how is Mehta Textiles going to work now? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll use that khopdi he had, you know, that skull he had, that for ma- black magic. He'll use that as like a paperweight. Yeah. Imagine being his secretary, you know, oh like you go to his office and there's like a bone and a skull. Like, you know who should be his secretary? Deep Shikha from Koela. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she went to secretarial school, remember? Maybe it should be Kalpana Ayer dressed as Deepshika. Ah, you know, right. so she still keeps on revenging on her, but in a corporate way. Oh no, she died at the end. Yeah. She yeah, died yeah. because she used to eat food. Ah, yeah, yeah. Juice. <laughs> juice. <laughs> no, no, no. Food juice didn't die because she didn't die. She basically Spent. landed on the Lakshman Rekha yeah. and she burnt. Wait, mm-hmm. there was a Lakshman Rekha? Yeah. With his blood. Remember the, the circle with his blood? And oh. It was Amir's blood? Yeah. Was that was a lot of blood for a five foot two Admi to lead. <laughs> how is he still alive? <laughs> it's tantric blood. Wow, how I, is it that this is my fourth time watching Tumere Ho and I completely missed this point? <laughs> I I want everyone to just understand that we are now delirious. <laughs> <laughs> the four of us don't even know what we are saying at this point. Uh, I mean, fans can at this point cut. Come at me, bro. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we should have said this at the start. Amir fans should probably not listen to this episode. <laughs> this is not for you. <laughs> um, I, do, I do find that also the scene where they reveal... Like, again, this is one of those plot points that they don't really do. Like, it just goes anywhere. But it's like, when you lose a child... There, he has to have like a mark somewhere. Ke mark kidder hai. You know, like how does a, you know, how do they recognize their child? He needs to at least have like, you know, half a locket or he needs to, you know, mm. sing a song that his ma used to sing. How do you otherwise, you know, you, you can't wait for some Ichadari Nak to turn into Kalpana Ayer and then tell you that this is your son, right? Mark your children, burn your children, do something, you know, if, if they get, you know, <laughs> if they come back, you can say, yeah, bhi mara nahi hai. <laughs> I don't think you should write a book on child psychology, Asim. <laughs> you definitely do not have uh, a vocation as Dr. Spock. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pev <Babe> Kurana. <laughs> okay. Um, Sujoy, man, final words? <laughs> Kaate ki kya? <laughs> <laughs> so Joy has been saving that up for the whole podcast. Uh, that's my final word. <laughs> <laughs> so Joy, you have to make a Tinder profile. Please make a Tinder profile and write Kate ki kya. <laughs> and if there's somebody that like recognizes what that is, then you have to marry her. Yeah. Like no questions asked. <laughs> and the, the way you have to propose to her is by saying choose. <laughs> <laughs> Now take her to a jewelry shop and show her like a couple of engagement uh, rings and then say juice. <laughs> and then that would be like, nice you know. uh, <laughs> no, I know diamonds for Sujoy. Sujoy will buy a nag money. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. So, so Joy is never going to get married now. <laughs> and even if he is, he won't invite us to his yeah, wedding. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But any <laughs> any marriage proposals, please send to youpodcasting at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> Pito, where can people find you? Where is your blog dropping? When when can we watch more of your kapowing? So um, I try to uh, upload every weekend. And uh, by the time that people hear this episode of Khandan, my second vlog should be up. Um, it's on Instagram at uh, Kapow with Pitu. And uh, I will also be uploading to YouTube pretty soon with the same name Kapow with Pitu. And that's where they can um, watch it and write comments and uh, also give me ideas on what my next uh, Kapow vlog should be about. But what is your next one? Can you lift the veil? Can you give us a teaser on what the topic of the next one will be? Um, yes, the next one is about my love for Bacha's Kulfi Faluda, which is in Profit Market, <laughs> Mumbai, um, and also has to do with uh, sari shopping anecdotes. Amazing. 
<laughs> as one does as <laughs> these two things are very connected <laughs> yeah it's it's the, the 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 vlog is very local but very global <laughs> <laughs> yes it's global and there is no bean in my blog <laughs> <laughs> yet <laughs> yet <laughs> amrita where can people find you online uh you can find me on twitter at amrita iq so joy I'm on Twitter and Instagram at 9e3k. Yeah. Um guys, this was really really fun. Next episode we're going to be um um doing a poll on Salman Khan's collaborations with David Dhawan. So we're going to be doing BV number no. 1 partner Jodwa and Alho they've done so many movies. We're going to pick the ones that we can find and are accessible accessible on streaming because we've done too many terrible prints on YouTube and honestly we can't take it anymore. So <laughs> we'll we'll just put the poll out very quickly and then vote for the one you want and uh, we'll we'll talk about that one. We were just kind of missing Salman mostly me so we want to talk about that. Um, um please don't let this episode be the basis for your reviews and <laughs> ratings on iTunes humne bahut mushkil se number 1 position hasil kari hai please don't make us stumble down there don't send an amir army to you know vote us down keep us at number 1 it will make me happy um drop us an email with comments at upodcasting@gmail.com a few people were asking me if they can send us a voice note which they can totally do keep it around 30 seconds a minute and let us know where you're speaking from and your name we'll add it or we'll talk about it at least on the show um you can follow us on twitter you can follow us on facebook and guys thanks for listening and pitu thanks again for coming on the show thank you thanks for inviting me great thank you pitu